okay so i'll be doing another example from direct proofs and the statement is that you have to prove that an odd integer is always the difference of two squares now this can be uh, a difficult thing to begin because you don't know the integers whose square this odd number could be you don't know that right so for example you say that i assume that p is equal to 2k plus 1 is my odd number and so what are the numbers I'm going to put here for which I'm going to take the difference and I know that uh, they're, they're going to be squared. So I don't know what, the, what, what those integers are. So I need to make up those integers out of nowhere but uh, normally we don't do that. We have something to begin with in order to take it somewhere else. So there is one logic. One logic says that because it's a direct proof so what I need to be doing is I need to take something which is already there for example I have this k here so I need to introduce squares in terms of this k this is one thing I could be doing and let me do uh, that first so I can say that I can write down p equal to 2k plus 1 into a new form which is in terms of something which is k square so I'm just trying to introduce a k square here because I need to uh, go towards a squared kind of variables in in the statement so this is uh, the only logic we can come up with right now so if we've introduced a case plus k square I also need to introduce a minus k square and I can what I can do is now I can use the a plus b whole square equal to a square plus b square formula in this term and I can say that this actually is it it's looking something like k plus 1 whole square will be k square plus 1 square or 1 plus 2 into 1 into k which is 2k so now I get minus k square here and this actually finishes the proof because we have represented p in terms of the difference of two squares which are k plus 1 whole square and k square where k plus 1 is an integer and k is an integer so it is proven I understand when you start something like this you don't get this kind of logic immediately so what I would do in in your situation I what I would do is I would say that let me first check this theorem uh, case by case so for example if I look at 6 square minus 5 square I get 36 minus 25 which is 11 11 is an odd number that is correct so 11 is a difference of two squares you can see here so if I uh, write 11 in another term is I can write it down 2 multiplied by 5 plus 1 which is the format of 2k plus 1. So I can see that there's a 5 here and there's a 5 here. Let me take 13. I can write it down as 2 multiplied by 6 which is 12 plus 1. So 12 plus 1 is 13. So what I would be doing is maybe I'm just guessing let me take this 6 over here and I get 6 square and let me write down the next uh, number 7 and take it square and then let me check it becomes 49 minus 36 which is actually equal to 13. So that theorem is proven on the case basis and now I can say because this number which I earlier called k is seen right over here. So what I can do is I can write it down as k plus 1 whole square minus k square because this if this is k then this would be k plus 1 right. So now I have written this as k because 6 and 6 are same I'm call, I have called this 6k I just guessed that maybe that this is also k and I have written this 7 as the next number from 6 which is k to k plus 1 and I expand this square and I write k square plus 2k plus 1 using a plus b whole square formula and I get this thing and I simply cancel this out and I get the same thing which was on the left hand side. So in my personal opinion this could be another way of proving this theorem. So in either way you start in this case we introduced the squares ourselves and in this case we have just you know guessed that uh, based on the theorem I have written this statement based on the theorem and then proven the theorem right. So this is the proof for this theorem.